A quick thank you to all who threw their support behind the New Old Stock Packard Bell test project. I'm currently building a plywood stand. Once I get the stand complete, it will be ready to put into service. Uh, also, I'm working on a component level troubleshooting of an all tube Sylvania with uh, color demodulation issues. That should be an interesting video, hopefully, for next week. And then we'll get this guy in service, and there'll just be update videos plugged in as it goes along along with the uh, typical weekly video, whatever I come up with, whatever comes my way. We got this and that and this. We'll start with this. This is an abused General Electric personal four tube battery powered radio. Now I believe that a portable radio is like an All-American 5 with a handle. And then a personal radio is a battery powered tube radio that uses 1 volt tubes. And then a pocket radio is a small transistor radio. They kept rebranding it to make it sound cool. Anyway, I believe a viewer sent me this some years ago probably five years ago and I just it just got set to the side and I never got around to it and again this is a Harper's four tube personal AM radio personal and these use two batteries There you go, personal radio. With service instructions right on the back, how cool. This is made in Japan. How cool. So we got four tubes, one R5, one T4, one S5, three S4. I thought most of them used a three V4. A battery, 1.5 volts, B battery 67.5 volts. Now this thing, I believe this was a kit from one of those recappers special uh, online radio extraordinaire places that sells the counterfeit Chinese junk capacitors for a 5,000% markup where you could just buy good quality ones off Mauser or DigiKey, but because it's branded historic radio extravaganza, all the novice newbies run there. Anyway, let me keep my mouth shut. Just go to go to Mauser or DigiKey if you need capacitors. Anyway, I did not build this. This came from an, an estate. Uh, CBS television cameraman estate, which is my, the monoscope image is my CBS Hollywood image on my YouTube page, is where, same place this came from. And this will supply your A battery, and it's adjustable via that pot. It's probably like an LM317. Then we have a multiple of voltages here, so that's negative. 22, 45, 67, 90, 135, and then it's got a C battery here, which I'm not sure. That must be a very low current, almost like bias or something. Interesting, they just they come in here with a regulated voltage and then they just use a bunch of Zener diodes in series to get you the voltage you want, the different steps. But yeah, if you look at this, these are completely isolated uh, sections, different taps on the transformer, the A and B and C. They're all completely separate, which is how these radios would be if you were using actual batteries. So this one uses 1.5 and 67.5. So it looks like it uses a D cell and some special 
thing which it probably eats up in half an hour. Let's look at this beauty right here. You know it must have been good when it was taped together. One R5, three V4. This one uses a three S4. One U4 and one U one U5. I believe this is this the more standard um, model six twenty two. Somewhere I have one of those beautiful RCA five tube sets, the ones with the RF front end. I need to find that. Now that I have this, and I don't have to worry about dealing with whatever we can make working again, these devices. Model 622, two one and a half volt A batteries, ever ready, 964. That's like a big long D cell, I believe. It's like D and a half. And then 175 volt B battery. So does this do 75 volts? No, this does 67 and 90. Oh well, take your pick. So this one obviously has two, two batteries in parallel. And then it looks like somebody cut the wiring to the other, the connector to the other battery off. Probably because the case of the radio was cracked, so they used this connector in another radio. Anyway, boy, they sure do like uh, 3.3 meg resistors, don't they? Brown, black, blue. What is that? 10 meg? Oh, it's got a couplet. It's got a Sprague couplet. It's got two wax capacitors and one electrolytic. This thing should just work. This should just work. Unless it has silver mica disease inside here, it should work. I think we make power up this one first. Let's see what we got here coming out of this before we hook it up and blow the radio sky high. So on the A right now it's adjusted at about 1.7 which free floating that's probably okay. Let's go to the B and go across here we have on the first one 32, 53, 74, 95, 118, 140, and the C is currently adjusted for 4.8. Let's hook it up and see what happens. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Gonna first turn this on. I hope that uh, power switch is not bad. Try and get this all in one picture here. Then I'm going to hook my meter. You know, Engineering Explained did a whole video on leaded gasoline. Actually, there's been a couple videos that have come out recently on leaded gasoline and I and what it does to humans. And uh, it would be nice if one of those would go viral enough just to get this low lead av gas completely banned. Just completely. And uh, that's going to piss some people off. But you know what? 
Maybe it would cut down on the one, the noise floor around here. Okay, I'm going to hook this up to here. And that voltage is not changing. Let me try this. I'm going to do... Oh, I think I have a bad clip lead here. A bad Chinese clip lead. Surprise, surprise. It looks like it's the red one. Let's try shorting it with the black one. No? Okay. What am I doing wrong here? Interesting, this thing puts out so much damn current, these it doesn't even phase the the high resistance of these cheap crappy clip leads. Yeah, I went about this a different way, and I measured the current draw. And this is drawing 140 milliamps. These tubes are drawing 140 milliamps, which maybe that's right. They're, they're 50 milliamps a piece. Uh, that would mean we're only getting three of them, though, if that's true. wonder how many milliamps they are. 1.4 and we have uh, 50 milliamps. I'm measuring the voltage on the radio. I'm going to try and turn this down a little bit. I don't want to, you don't want to overvolt these tubes too much, the filaments. So yeah, it seems like we're missing one. If we're only getting, if they're 50 milliamps a piece, and we're only getting, we should be getting 200 milliamps, except what is the 3V4? Let me see what the current is on that one. Okay, so the 3V4, I'm going to assume that they got the, them in parallel. That sucker should be 100 milliamps. So, we're either missing the 3V4 or we're missing two of the other tubes, if I'm, my math is correct. I believe this is a tube socket issue because I've been fingering the tubes and it's going up and down, but I got it around 210 milliamps, which is, I would like to see 250, but who am I to like to want to see anything? All right, here we go. I'm gonna, since this someone cut this off, I'm gonna just attach it to the power switch here. We'll see what happens. Radio. Basically, it's too late to start saving for retirement, right? Not right. Starting to save, even in your 50s, can really make a difference. Well, right now, saving seems hard to wrap my head around. Plus, with the way this year's been going, <laughs> Hey, listen, it's okay. You still got this. Just go to aceyourretirement.org. It's an online tool from AARP that can help you get your retirement savings on track no matter your age. It's free and only takes about three minutes. You, you've got this seems to be another one of those think tank phrases that's been dropped lately that's coming out everywhere you've got this you've got this your life is coming to an end you have cancer don't worry you've got this just head to and make your plan to start saving for retirement thanks that's aceyourretirement.org the value pass for the big los angeles year to date our clients have not lost one dime in our It's got the civil defense marks.
program, what are you actually going to do? You know, so that's, there, there's a lot of non-tech careers. Thank you, y'all. Straight to your emails, so you have them when you need it most. It's the most complete free warning light report. You know, I have a feeling not a lot of these got much use because they would chew through the batteries so quick. I, I just, I don't think a lot of these got a lot of use. It's like the really, generally the really small portable televisions, they didn't get a lot of use. All they have to do to have a comfortable retirement is accumulate a lot of wealth, but you say that... You're welcome to the show. Nothing but the best. Yeah, like, you know, totally yeah, like, you know. Yes, free stuff and community organizations. Those are some of the basic building blocks of this whole thing. Okay, um, so I want to try and get our test station. Okay, that's the antenna. There it is. Everybody's favorite station. Today is a great day testing testing. This is only a test. It's probably, it's probably the best thing on AM now. It's probably the best station on AM. Actually, let me show you the way I align radios, the front end of these radios, which is kind of my way. So you can find her, but this this only goes to basically like 1650. So what I'll do is I'll turn the oscillator down. for 
Okay, there's there's Black Lives Matter radio. So what I'll do is I'll go up to the Asian station. Then what I'll do, I'll come down to KNX. This regulation, and they've determined that there are adequate safeguards in place now. Political campaigns can accept crypto contributions under strict circumstances. The receiver, the candidate, is not actually receiving the contribution in cryptocurrency. It's being immediately converted by a third-party processor. That third-party processor is federally regulated. Crypto is first converted to dollars before it goes to the campaign. Natalie Davidian, KNX. Antoine Walker came to the mm. college I went to, and I'm going to say, I hit Okay, then I'll come up one to the ESPN, and then I'll peak the antenna. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure, man. Always fun, man. Appreciate it. It is fun. And we got prime time coming up. That's Amber Wilson and Courtney. Probably needs the IF done, but day. that's Be too watching. much of Remember the high school if you're a horse racing person. You need in a day exam that includes next week. Golden West. Wiki, Jay, and Matt. He was a triple-double weight. What I want to see... I want to see if it'll get 1090. This is not an impressive radio. It does not get 1090. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max in the morning. Monday morning till 10 a.m. 710 ESPN. So this is what used to be Radio Disney. But there's a station between this and KNX that a good radio will get. It's like right there. Yeah, this is this is not an impressive radio. This is like um, this is like a. a Honkoidial transistor set. I mean, it's okay for the city, but this is not a DXer. News Radio 600, Kogo. This is News Radio 600, Kogo. KOGO and KMYI HD2 San Diego. Live, local, breaking. This is like San Diego's KNX. I'm Joe Giro, Fox News. That according to the World Health Organization director Tedros Ghebreyesus about the spread of monkeypox in more than 70 countries. An outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. Nearly 3,000 cases have been confirmed in the U.S., including two children. The White House physician says President Biden's symptoms remain mild and continue to improve after contracting COVID-19. White House Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci weighing in on the president continuing to work remotely. There's nothing wrong with what he's doing by trying to get work done from a virtual standpoint. Fauci on Fox's Cavuto Live. They're um, acre wild getting ready to make a move, it sounds like to me. They, they're, they're putting it out there. Texas All right, let me shut up. Jeez, Kogo is actually more worthless than uh, KNX. It's more commercials and just garbage. Okay, let's try... 
Let's try this one. Of course, being Japanese, everything is compressed down to half the size. Oh, if you're interested, this thing's using about 15 milliamps on the B battery. Turn this on, and we're going to do our amp meter here. We're going to check our milliamps on the 1.5 volt. And why are we doing about the same thing as the GE? We got more tubes that are not... There we go. It went up to... Moved them around. It went up to 2.2. Or 220. I love the the tube holder. There, a piece of cardboard with some holes punched in it. That's that's erotic. That's very sophisticated. Okay, this one used a lower voltage. This one used 67.5, and this one used 75. Well, we don't have a choice. We have 67 or 90, so. We're probably running that one a little low, and this one probably, who knows. So let's see. Um, I, I believe this one is positive, the female. So this goes here. We still have that broken wire. Got a little activity there, don't we? I bet this will work when I solder that lead back on the antenna. Let me do that. I resoldered the antenna there in its tuning stations. Very quiet though. Why would it be so quiet? Am I doing this right? 67.5. Right? <laughs> Leaky capacitors. Leaky capacitors. Is this that capacitor right there? 0 0.004, 0 0.005, 5,000 picofarads at 400 volts. If you listen to the way this responds, this is bad, leaky paper capacitors. Watch.
That's leaky paper capacitors. And I'm thinking these are paper. Yes, and George Gascon will just release them and they will be back out on the street stealing catalytic converters again tomorrow. I think this might make a good separate standalone repair video, so I'm going to do that in the future. This is definitely leaky capacitors. Because the capacitor is not isolating the DC from the volume control, so when you adjust the volume control, you're adjusting the bias on the tube, the DC bias. Yeah, I just mainly wanted to test this out and kind of take... Very low current draw on the uh, B battery. It's like 220 milliamps for the filaments and 10 milliamps for the B battery. Very efficient.